two feet. Two feet. That's a that's a great question, uh, person who I can't see. Um, I'll explain this to you. It's very simple. Uh, as a as a production as a member of the production crew, as somebody who is very close to the production for years, obviously. The people in LA, they value Misha Collins tremendously as an actor. They have for years. He's a wonderful character. They enjoyed working with him. As go on, as go on. <laughs> but what we also realized in prepping the episode is shit, Misha Collins lookalikes are a dime a dozen. I mean, all you need. Conventions are proof positive. Yeah. Go, go to a, a, a costume Will Somebody costume. turn off his microphone. <laughs> I mean, a brunette, a brunette kid in a trench coat, boom, you got Misha Collins. And, and how hard is it to be monotone? I see like 15 of them right you know? now. It's like, God, uh, can you talk like this? Can you wear this jacket? Great, you're Misha Collins, you know what I mean? Like, it's real simple. So, in that regard, we felt like I would never, ever put Jared or Jensen or Mark Shepard in harm's way. So help me God. But Misha, we had about four extras in the truck. We were in a truck. Maybe. Is that answer your question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's, let's address this real. Let's discuss the elephant in the room. Oh, there she is. Sergey, would you uh, <laughs> take the stage? So, uh, so this is your show. Uh, it's always fun to have production crew, and sometimes we get actors at these events as well. Misha sometimes appears on the show in the role of Castiel, and uh, we're excited to see how that pans out for us. So the question you were asking in backstage was based on maybe a true event. Maybe I feel like we need to therapeutically uh, deal with this. Oh, without okay, yeah, let's let's get this out of our system. Oh, 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 oh! Literally. So, first of all, just to set the stage, miserable night. I mean, rain, mud, cold, late, and my, and I don't want to spoil the whole episode. Don't spoil the episode. episode. But there will be a, a time in the episode, and cover your ears if you don't want to hear this, where uh, the actor playing Castiel is forced to crawl through freezing cold mud. Uh, and, and there's a little, there's a, there's a dirt road that I'm crawling across, and there's a sequence in which a truck is gonna come racing down that road. And just to assuage any of my concerns, Richard says, just so you know, there is not, and I would listen to me carefully, Misha, there is not a universe in which you are on the ground and that pickup truck is driving down this road at the same time. We're doing green screen. That, those two things are not going to be happening at the same time. Do not worry. <laughs> Cut to, Misha, I'm gonna need you here. The pickup truck is gonna come racing down the road. I mean, you really sold me a bill of goods. I did, and uh, everything What was it, what happened? Where did you Just so you know, that's 100% accurate. There's nothing he said in terms of the job. I would be, I was ready to jump in and go, yeah, no, that, that happened. And, uh, and he's looked at me, he's like, Oh, what happened? I will never be in the road with the truck. I'm like, oh, bitch, Raj. <laughs> Visual effects says it's fine. And he's like, Visual effects could CGI a fresh leg on me if I get hurt. I get, what do they care? They have no horse in this race. I said, TikTok kid, I'm losing my day. Let's do this. Um, and we did it. It was one take. It wasn't so bad. And now we have this great friend moment that we can share on stage. <laughs> but did you tell him? Yeah, you have to cut that scene. It actually didn't make the final. Rest is like you're not eating his That's just classic Benedict. <laughs> so taking, real time. taking our near death experience, <laughs> making it about you, making it all about you, <laughs> ruining. Dashing the hopes of this young actor who wants to stay on the show. By the way, I'm selling the cut scene on DVD. <laughs> Find the merch room. Fifty bucks or whatever you can get. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that happened. So, uh, well, that's exciting. It's a good, great story. Yeah, good story that you get. You I think about. it made us closer. Well, it made me closer to the pickup truck. It sure as hell did. <laughs> Damn right it did. Um, well, I, I'm going to take this subtle hint uh -huh. as. 
somebody backstage telling us that I think our panel I was maybe, I think oh, okay. you know yeah. we'll, we'll, let's not make this weird. So boys, are you ready to play us off? Are you ready? Are we okay. Play Misha's song? No, we're gonna play us off. Then we'll play Misha on. Okay, should I leave? I no, just hang here. It's cool. Okay. You're a good one. You ready? All right. Take it, boys. He's Richard. I'm Rob. This is Matt. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's bring out the guy you've been waiting for! I know you're on pins and needles! He's my angel! Keep it going! Go. Go. You're my angel! You're my Professional. He didn't hear that kind of adoration from you people. <laughs> All right, Las Vegas, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Rob, get away from his crotch. Away from his crotch, Rob. Rob, away from his crotch. <laughs> well, I think we started that off on the right foot. Yeah. <laughs> the last. Um, the last episode, Richard, that you directed was the, the Imaginary Friends episode, right? Have, have you already left? Is that right? You know better than him, anyway. Uh, my uh, my daughter has some imaginary friends, one of whom's name is is Bobby. Bobby is a girl, and and she said to me, "I've told this story before, so plug your ears if you've already heard it." Um, Dad. Yeah, I mean, Bobby said, Bobby said a bad word. Aww. Oh, really? What did she say? Bobby said, fuck. <laughs> so I choked her and I killed her. And as a parent, you, those moments make you feel proud because you know you're, you're doing something right. <laughs> you're teaching her to swear, and you're teaching her to hurt people together. <laughs> Tiny bit under the weather, so if I'm a little bit slower and less interesting, even less interesting than usual, usual, you'll have to forgive me. Um, yeah. See, oh, that's all I needed. It was a little sympathy. Thank you. Um, how many of you guys are, are here for the first time? Uh, yeah. This has got to be the highest concentration of virgins in Vegas ever. Um, and how many of you live like close by, like in Vegas or Vegas? Or Vegas, or Vegas? So how many don't? There's a so people are coming here as a destination event. You're coming here to, to do the convention, and then and then make money at the tables as well, right? So what? No. That's I'm very unusual. What happened? <laughs> um, I I may I did some gambling um, last night. I, I played a little bit of blackjack. Um, thank you. <laughs> I made five dollars. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure it was a high roller table. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, five bucks. So. Thank you. Um, 
do you guys have any questions? There's some people standing in, in a queue on either side. Do you guys have questions or comments or criticisms? <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Well, okay, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It's actually hard to hear you from up here. It's, it's hard to hear? Um, it's echoing. Is that better? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Much better. Okay. Oh, there's kind of reverb. What? I like that. It's very rock and roll. Um, I was just going to tell you how much I enjoy the poetry you've been posting on Snapchat. <laughs> Nobody can say, I don't know how to use Snapchat. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the highlight of my day when I get off work, and I was just curious um, how you're picking what you read. and how, 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 I'm, how I'm picking? How are you picking the poems? Well, uh, it's a very sophisticated process um, of trying to find anything that can be squeezed into 10 seconds. <laughs> There's not that many poems that are that short, as it turns out. Um, I guess I'm going for things that have some sort of resonant relevance in some way in my mind. Um, are you are you a poet? Um, a reader of poetry. A reader.